Dodd uh, announced today, uh, the senator from Con Connecticut, obviously, that he's stepping down. Uh, what is different about today, however, is not to announce the beginning of yet another campaign for the United States Senate, but rather to announce that after 35 years of representing the people of Connecticut in the United States Congress, I will not be a candidate for re-election this November. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, um, this is big news in a lot of ways. Uh, but let me couple it with Dorgan as well. Uh, Byron Dorgan, senator, Democratic senator from North Dakota, also stepping down, saying he will not run for re-election. Um, now, how does this play out? First of all, uh, Dorgan is a mixed bag. He is what they call a moderate Democrat, and he's earned that title uh, by being strongly on both sides on different issues. So Dorgan has been an absolute hero in uh, financial reform. Uh, he said back in 1999 when they started doing the deregulation, this is a terrible idea. Don't do it. It's going to lead to banks that are too big to fail, and they're going to uh, wind up using taxpayer money, etc. He was exactly right on that. Uh, during the health care bill, he fought uh, to get drug importation uh, from Canada into the country. That would have saved us $100 billion over 10 years. The Obama administration killed it. Uh, and so he, the, he was a great fighter on those fronts. Uh, on the other hand, mm, on global warming issues, mm, not so good. Okay, Now that's because he has a lot of energy companies that are in his home state. And he wants to protect those coal companies, gas companies, etc., those local interests. And that's how politics gets played. And I mind that less. Why do I mind that less? Because it's one thing to play politics and like what Ben Nelson did was get an exemption for Medicaid for the state of Nebraska. That's as old as time, right? It's another thing to just sell out to corporate America to get paid more, right? So that's a distinction I make. So Dorgan wasn't a good guy on those issues, but at least he had more legitimate political interest there rather than just taking lobbyist money, okay? But he was not on the right side on that and he was not on the right side on a, a number of other issues as well, okay? So he was a true moderate in the Senate. Uh, I think losing him on the financial reforms is going to be tough. So I think it's overall bad news. Plus, in the state of uh, North Dakota, it doesn't look good. They have a, a governor there that is Republican, Hoven, uh, John Hoven, and he looks to be in pretty good shape there. There are a couple of people who might run on the Democratic side, including uh, Representative Earl Pomeroy, or maybe even former state attorney general and tax commissioner Heidi Heitkamp. They got a decent shot at him. And then an interesting development today, talk show host Ed Schultz apparently approached by some Democrats if, officially in the state of uh, North Dakota to consider whether he might run uh, for Dorgan's seat, which would be a very interesting development, right? So we're going to have a real race on our hands in North Dakota, and it's very possible that it goes to a Republican. So you lose a real fighter in financial reform, and you might, the seat might go to a Republican. That's an overall loss in North Dakota. Now, when you go to Dodd, well, he put together a great financial reform uh, bill, and I say that within the context of current day politics. Is it as hard as I would have gone? Not even close, right? But it was much harder than the Obama administration was willing to go. It was much tougher than the House version, right? Now, that's how he started, right? Now he's already compromised and negotiated, brought in the Republicans, and it's getting weaker and weaker and weaker as it goes. Now he's the head of the banking committee. That's the most important committee when it comes to financial reform. And he had to prove himself that he was not a sellout to the banks because he was already involved in a couple of financial scandals, including getting uh, privileged mortgages from uh, Countrywide. Right Now if he's not up for re-election, he doesn't have the political pressure anymore. He doesn't have to prove himself anymore. So that's a big problem because that was helping to push him left. That was helping to push him towards real reform. Now, here's the other critical issue for Dodd and for Dorgan. They could go one of two ways. Either because they're retiring, they could say, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm going to do the right thing here. I don't care about uh, collecting money anymore from the lobbyists. Uh, I don't care about corporate America anymore. Uh, I'm going to do the justice by the people who elected me and I care about my legacy and how I'm going to be remembered. Okay, That's possibility number one. Possibility number two is, hey, you know what? Now that I'm retiring, it's time to cash in. And how do you cash in? By becoming a lobbyist. So 
this is the time that they might want to do favors for corporate America more than any other time. Remember, Billy Tauzin, very influential member of the House, a Republican, did the Medicare Part D negotiations in the House and made sure that the government could not negotiate with the drug companies, then immediately left and got a $2 million contract from the drug companies. So the fact that they're leaving the Senate might be disastrous news. Now, we don't know which way they're going to go. Dorgan's 67 years old. He might think, hey, you know what, this is time to get paid. <laughs> I, I don't know. I hope he doesn't. And, and Dodd has taken an awful lot of money from these financial companies in the past. And the real question is which way they're going to go on that, and it's not clear. And one other downside to Dodd leaving, the guy next up in seniority is Tim Johnson, a Democratic senator who has got a terrible track record on reform. He's the only Democrat that voted against uh, credit card reform. He's uh, got pay lenders in his home state. Those are the guys that charge the worst counter rates, up to 1,000% interest per year if you total it up. And he protects those guys. He protects the credit card companies. Uh, he's not a big banker guy, but he protects every other side of the financial industry. So if that guy becomes the head of the banking committee, that's another disaster. So when you total all this up, today's news of those guys stepping down, pretty bad news. We'll see how it develops, though. And what comes next is very important.